We've made videos that have covered the terrifying cryptids of Fallout, but what about all the other creatures that are not cryptids? Of these, which ones are the most haunting? Let's talk about them. These are five of the most haunting Fallout creatures. The Deathclaw. Not many creatures inspire as much fear and respect as our first creature on this list, and that is the Deathclaw. Genetically engineered before the Great War, the Deathclaw has since become a menace across the wasteland. With its massive size, incredible strength, and unfathomable speed, this apex predator haunts the ruins of society, stalking anyone and anything that dares to cross its path. But it's not just the Deathclaw's physical appearance that induces a unique sort of fear amongst wastelanders. Rather, it's a combination of its origins, appearance, behavior, and dreadful aura that it seems to give off. The Deathclaw wasn't always a savage beast that roamed the wasteland. Its origins lie in a pre-war experiment, designed as a biological weapon by the US military. Originally created by splicing the DNA of various species, including the Jackson's Chameleon, the Deathclaw was intended to replace human soldiers in combat. After the Great War, however, these creatures escaped confinement and evolved in the wild, becoming one of the most dangerous threats in the wasteland. The idea that the Deathclaw came about from the minds of humans is haunting enough already. They're a living reminder of the consequences of tampering with nature and the dangers of the pre-war militarization of just about everything, two themes common throughout the Fallout series. Another key reason behind the Deathclaw's haunting nature is its terrifying physical design. The creature towers over most other wasteland beasts. Its thick, leathery skin makes it quite resistant to many conventional arms. Its horns, teeth, and talons are all primed and ready to tear into anything it deems to be food. It is the deadliest predator in the entire wasteland. And possibly the very worst thing about the Deathclaw is their behavior. They're not mindless brutes, but actually quite intelligent. Deathclaws, especially in Fallout 4, tend to ambush their prey. I can't count the number of times a scripted Deathclaw encounter has made me jump. I mean, we see an exact ambush in the very beginning of the game when helping Preston at the Museum of Freedom. Combine this intelligence with everything else the Deathclaw possesses, and you have a ruthless beast that doesn't really discriminate. It doesn't matter how bad your day has been, the Deathclaw is Mother Nature's twisted reminder that it can always get worse. The Fog Crawler First introduced in the Far Harbor DLC, the Fog Crawler is one of the most fearsome and haunting creatures in the series. These massive, insect-like predators roam the mist-covered island, using the dense fog to ambush their prey. While the exact origins of the fog crawler are unclear, they appear to be mutated crustaceans or insects, having adopted to the harsh, irradiated environment of the island. Their grotesque features, spindly legs, sharp claws, and armored bodies make them look otherworldly almost alien. Their mutations have allowed the fog crawler to, unsurprisingly, thrive in the fog. They are the apex predator of the island. In combat, the fog crawler is nothing to be messed with. Its size, coupled with its tough exoskeleton, allows it to absorb significant damage. For example, the enraged fog crawler variant has a damage resistance of 4,000, and levels with the player, making them one of the strongest enemies in the game. Unlike smaller, more fragile enemies, a fog crawler can withstand sustained firepower, and its aggressive nature means it won't stop until one of you is dead. But what makes the fog crawler especially terrifying is the environment around it. The island is blanketed in a mysterious radioactive mist 
that limits visibility and creates a claustrophobic atmosphere. The fog serves as both a camouflage and a hunting tool for the fog crawler. Moving silently through the mist, it's able to remain hidden until it's ready to strike. The player will often hear the creature before seeing it. The sound of its movement or a distant booming echo creates mounting tension. The fog plays an active role in creating fear. Because it limits sight lines, you're often unsure of when a fog crawler will appear, creating a sense of dread. You know a fog crawler is out there, you just can't see where. It's like something straight from the mind of Stephen King. The fog crawler, whether the beast knows it or not, is a creature that thrives on the fear of the unknown. Its ability to use the fog to its advantage, combined with its terrifying strength and speed, makes it one of the most formidable foes in Fallout. The fog aids the creature, turning every step in Far Harbor into a potential nightmare. Its predatory nature, coupled with the eerie atmosphere of the island, ensures that the fog crawler remains one of the most iconic and haunting creatures in the Fallout series. The Glowing One The Glowing One is a unique and terrifying variant of the Feral Ghoul. While all ghouls are usually the victims of intense radiation exposure, the Glowing One takes this to an extreme level becoming a walking conduit of radioactive energy. While regular feral ghouls are typically pretty frail, the glowing one is much more formidable due to its radiation-based abilities. It doesn't just rely on physical attacks like its feral counterparts. The glowing one can actively radiate energy, damaging and weakening those nearby, while healing other ghouls in the process. It's got a bit of offense, it's got a bit of defense. In combat, a glowing one can revive fallen ghouls, making it capable of turning a simple fight into a prolonged and chaotic battle. This means that players must prioritize taking down the glowing one quickly before it can heal others or unleash deadly radiation. Its ability to bolster other ghouls elevates its danger level far beyond that of any regular feral ghoul. Where environmental hazards are stationary, meaning pools of radiation don't move, the glowing one counters that. They are a moving and a living example of the hazards of the wasteland. This passive danger makes it a much more terrifying threat than other wasteland creatures. The glowing aura that surrounds the creature also adds to its eerie and unnatural appearance. Encountering a glowing one while in a dark or enclosed space increases the player's feelings of dread. Its glow is akin to a beacon of death, a green glow warning you to steer clear. The glowing one is not just a stronger variant of the common feral ghoul. Its unique healing ability, bioluminescent glow, and radiation aura result in the glowing one being one of the most terrifying Fallout creatures. The Centaur Another one of Fallout's most disturbing creatures is the Centaur. Born from horrifying experiments involving the forced evolutionary virus, these twisted mutants are created by combining multiple organisms, humans, animals, or other life forms into one monstrous entity. The result is a grotesque creature with multiple limbs, heads, and distorted body parts, making it one of the most unsettling creatures in the wasteland. Biologically engineered and created by the Master, the Centaur is a nightmarish and unnatural mutant. While its appearance has changed throughout the franchise, each variation includes multiple limbs of both human and animal. Unlike its peer, the Super Mutant, the centaur does not retain a humanoid figure, instead being a horribly disfigured beast that has to crawl along the ground with a mass of limbs, mouths, and tentacles flailing about. Quite gross. Though centaurs are not the fastest or most aggressive creatures in Fallout, they can be threats to unsuspecting wastelanders. These mutants are able to fire radioactive projectile spit at enemies dealing a powerful damage over time effect. Alone, they're pretty weak, but in groups, 
A volley of spit flying your way would never be a pleasant experience, no matter the context. Plus, centaurs are often found alongside supermutants, acting as guard dogs or sentries for their stronger kin. This pairing makes them even more dangerous, as players must endure both the relentless gunfire and heavy weapon attacks of supermutants and the corrosive acidic assaults from the centaurs. What truly makes the centaur terrifying is its grotesque, unnatural appearance. The combination of limbs, heads, and body parts from multiple creatures creates an unsettling visual horror. Their slow, crawling movements add to this eerie nature, making them appear as though they are constantly writhing in pain. The twisted fusion of flesh and faces reminds players that these nightmares were once humans, just like us. As far as appearances go, the centaur has to be one of the nastiest and disturbing creatures in all of Fallout. Actual nightmare fuel. The Mirelurk Queen. Dominating the irradiated waterways and swamps of the Commonwealth and Appalachia is the Mirelurk Queen. Towering above just about everything in the wasteland, the Mirelurk Queen is royalty among the mutated marine life. As the apex predator of its ecosystem, the Mirelurk Queen's presence will always send a chill down the backs of any wastelander that ventures a bit too close to the shore. Like other Mirelurks and other creatures in general, I suppose, the Queen is the result of intense radiation in the aftermath of the Great War. However, the queen represents just how far these sorts of mutations can go. Her size is unmatched, being one of the largest creatures in the entire wasteland. Her heavily armored exoskeleton makes it incredibly difficult to defeat. Still though, seasoned wasteland adventurers will know to target the soft underbelly of the beast or the smaller target of her face. But taking her down is only half the battle. She has her own offensive arsenal to help stave off threats. The queen's melee attacks are devastating. Her powerful limbs are able to crush even the most durable of opponents. She also possesses a long-range attack in the form of an acidic spit, which can leave a deadly and persistent pool, turning the battlefield itself hostile towards you and ensuring that you are always watching your step. And perhaps the most notable ability of Her Majesty is her capacity to spawn smaller Mirelurk hatchlings during combat. The Mirelurk Queen shoots eggs from her body. Upon landing, these eggs hatch, with a feeble baby Mirelurk ready to mindlessly attack the thing posing a threat to their mother. While not very strong, these tiny creatures can swarm and easily overwhelm the player if not dealt with. It's not a 1v1. It's a 1v20. This constant call for reinforcements can turn the fight into a long, drawn out struggle. Worst of all, despite the size of the Mirelurk Queen, she stays true to her name and typically lurks in the ground and water, arising only when getting ready for a kill. How does a towering mutant manage to also be able to stealthily ambush people? I don't know. It's wild. So let me leave you with a warning. If you're ever traversing the swampy marshes of the wasteland and start to feel the ground rumble, I would suggest doing a 360, then doing a 180, and getting the heck out of dodge. And that wraps up what I believe to be some of the most terrifying, disturbing, and haunting creatures of the Fallout universe. Whether man-made, pre-war, or some combination of the two, it's these creatures that are responsible for the countless jump scares players, myself, experience while playing. The Wasteland is a perilous place full of all sorts of monsters, and it's because of this that you never know when the next nightmare will emerge from the shadows. That's all from me today folks, if you liked the video be sure to share and subscribe, join the discord, have a good rest of your day, cheers. A mob of dangerous creatures of all different species have been terrorizing locals in Westside. The cause of the attacks is thus far unknown.